The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Meredith Hendricks, and Meredith is Executive Director of the Land Trust for Santa Barbara County. Welcome, Meredith. Thank you, Cinder. I'm happy to be here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I'm so glad you're here because you folks are doing such important work and you know what? I bet a lot of people don't even know half the things that you're doing. So I'm very eager to hear what you've been up to, what you've got planned for the future, all that. Great. Well, I think a lot of people enjoy the incredible open space we have here in Santa Barbara County yeah. without necessarily thinking about how it came to be, right? We know right. that we have incredible parks and access to our coast and inland, these gorgeous rolling grasslands and oak trees. But people have made really intentional choices about creating those spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you folks have been sort of the driving force with a lot of that, a lot of times under the radar. And so, you know, how do you decide which spaces to protect or how do you decide that? Sure. So the Land Trust is a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and we work to ensure that as a public benefit, the entire county is having special places protected forever. So we protect land because it has high quality habitat for plants and animals. We protect it for agricultural resources. Our local food sheds are so important to us. And this county generates almost $2 billion a year in agricultural revenue. Wow. But we're also interested in recreation and making sure that everyone has the chance to get outside and experience nature. All of those things combined really contribute to our quality of life, the quality of our air, our water, that kind of thing. And so as an organization, we partner with willing landowners who are interested in seeing their property protected forever. Okay. And then we figure out a way to compensate them for protecting their property while also ensuring that what's so special about that place will never change. And it's our obligation as a nonprofit to make sure that the lands we conserve will stay that way forever. Wow. And so do you go out do you identify some space and go out and figure out who owns it and see if they're open to the idea? Or do they typically come to you? We do both. Mm. So the county is really fortunate to have something called the Conservation Blueprint and the Blueprint mm. Atlas, which is a really robust tool that allows us to take a look at where are these critical places that uh, protect habitat or have really prime soils or are really well suited to recreation. And we come to decisions based on where we know places are really unique. And then we can both reach out to landowners to see if they might be interested in learning more, or they approach us. They're oh. aware that conservation is an opportunity, and in some cases there are incredible tax benefits associated mm. with donating land for conservation, or they may be required to protect land as part of mitigation for some form of development oh. they're doing. So if they're establishing a vineyard, for example, mm -hmm. they may be required to protect some ponds on the property so that they can get their permits. And we're an organization that can knit all of those things together and make sure that the land gets protected forever. And what a blessing you are to so many people. So it seems like Santa Barbara County is really unique in in the um, sort of opportunity for lands for con conservation. Yes, you're absolutely right. Our county being at the southern end of the central coast uh -huh. and a part of sort of the Southern California complex, it means that not only are we a relatively large county, we have many of the plants and animal species that occur both to the north of us and to the south of us. Mm -hmm. We have almost every kind of habitat type here in the county somewhere from coastal marshes to the rolling oak woodlands. 
out to the Kuyama area, which is on the edge of the Central Valley. We have those incredible mountains, which are part of the Los Padres mm -hmm. National Forest, but all of those come with creeks and watersheds that drain down. And so what's so special about Santa Barbara County is not only the things that I just described, but also that development has been relatively modest in the county compared with other parts of California. And so as a community and as a society, we have the opportunity to decide which places are important for conservation and which places are appropriate for growth. And then we can be a part of the conservation side of that. That's just amazing. And especially if you were to compare Santa Barbara County with say somewhere up in the Bay Area, th that land is all kind of spoken for, right? That's right, yes. I was born and raised in the Bay Area. I've had a, a lifelong connection to Santa Barbara and I was doing land conservation in the Bay Area and for the most part, the Bay Area is fully built out. Of course, there's more development taking place, but in terms of large opportunities for conservation, they're diminishing. And it's much more of a focus on small parcels or little mm. connections. Down here, there's whole swaths of the county where there are ranches or open lands that haven't mm -hmm. been developed. And there are landowners really interested in seeing those places never change. And so they partner closely with us to make sure that that's what happens. Wow. And so I can only imagine you do a lot of collaboration. We sure do, yep. As a nonprofit, we are required to provide a public benefit. So our number one collaborator are the communities we serve, making sure that we understand what people need and want in terms of conservation. Mm -hmm. But we also work closely with other conservation organizations. Mm. The California Rangeland Trust, for example, they're a statewide organization that protects rangeland, grazing, cows. Uh -huh. And we get together and talk about opportunities and we take the lead on the ones that are appropriate for us and they may take the lead on others. We also work closely with the Nature Conservancy oh, and the yeah. Trust for Public Land, both very large organizations. We focus only on Santa Barbara County. Mm -hmm. So in many respects, we are the number one local partner to much larger groups. Oh. And that includes some of the wildlife agencies, the Wildlife Conservation Board, Fish and Wildlife, that kind of thing. And then, of course, our supporters are another partner. Yes, yes. So um, could you give us some examples of some of the areas in Santa Barbara County that we might be familiar with that, that you have protected, um, but maybe we don't realize that, that, you're, that you're the ones making that happen? Sure. Well, usually we're the ones making it happen with a lot of other people. But if you've ever walked along the bluffs in Carpinteria, okay. we've been uh -huh. instrumental in protecting those spaces. If you visited uh, Coronado Butterfly Preserve in Goleta or enjoyed the Elwood Mesa, we've been a part of protecting portions of that area. Uh, our Arroyo Hondo Preserve on the Gaviota Coast is free and open to everyone with reservations. Uh, it did burn in the Al Asal fire, but we're happy to report we've reopened the preserve and we welcome everyone to come visit that place. And then there are portions of the county that are still privately owned but conserved forever. And mm -hmm. those are primarily ranch lands mm -hmm. that uh, you wouldn't normally experience as a park, but it's important to protect those spaces as well. Wow. So um, Alice Hell Fire that you yeah. mentioned, uh, can you talk about how, um, how you think about wildfires and how the Alice Hell Fire in particular affected uh, that area? Sure. So, Wildfire is a reality of life, and it's an increasing presence in our lives in California, mm -hmm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you look at Santa Barbara County, the vast majority of the county is at high risk for wildfire. And so as a conservation organization, we know that wildfire is normal, and that as long as people are safe, it's an okay thing to happen because mm -hmm. it's part of the natural systems. So when the Al Asal fire uh, crested the ridge line in October of 2021, uh, our number one concern was making sure that our neighbors and our employees on site were safe. Okay. And then we worked closely with Cal Fire to let them address the fire and protect the structures. But 95% of our 800 acres burned, and that was a good thing. Ooh. It had been over 50 years since that land had burned and tucked inside the dirt, inside what we call the seed bank, mm -hmm. waiting for a chance to grow, were a, an incredible tapestry of wildfires, wildflowers, and they only come out after wildfire. Oh my gosh. They're called fire followers. Oh. And most of the time, they get out-competed by the chaparral, the uh -huh. manzanita, and the brush. 
and only after fire do they get a chance to bloom. And I'm talking about fire poppies and ki different kinds of snapdragons. And so Mother Nature is prepared for fire and we just want to make sure that we're being smart and that folks are safe, but we recognize it's a reality of life. I have never heard about those fire flowers. Fire following flowers. Fire following <laughs> flowers. Yeah. So are we going to see them pop up here real soon? Should we like make a point of going up there and Yes, I, I would welcome everyone out to Arroyo Hondo Preserve each spring. Uh, for several years following a fire, the f uh, fire following flowers are present. It's <laughs> Easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> the idea is that any time a place in California burns, you're going to see the plants that wouldn't otherwise have a chance to grow come out every spring for a few years following the fire. So oh, it's, so for it's, a few years. Yes, that's right. It's not a flash. Uh, it actually takes several seasons for the stump sprouters, the, the plants that regrow from uh -huh. um, the stumps can come fully back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's just incredible. So um, let's see. So you folks are a 501c3. We are. And so I bet you uh, welcome tax deductible donations from the public. We not only welcome it, we depend on it. Yeah. Good. Okay. So it's a big part of your budget. Absolutely. It allows you to do the incredible work that you do. And so I bet if a person watching this, for example, wants to be part of it, um, they can go on the website and push that Donate Now button and make a donation. And we would really appreciate it. And if they'd like to receive our materials, they can sign up that way as well. Okay. Our supporters are our partners in conservation. Yeah. And so they can find out, well, they, you probably have a list of all of the areas um, that are under protection. And I bet they can find out all kinds of things on your website. They sure can. So we hold 54 conservation easements throughout the county, and that number is growing every year. So in 2021, we protected the most land we'd conserved in over 20 years. We protected wow. over 4,000 acres of important places in Santa Barbara County. So if 4, you're interested thousand. in seeing those places, they are listed on our website. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a good reminder to everybody to get out there in the open spaces and enjoy th these areas that we have right in our backyard. That's right. And if people are interested in seeing a new place and they'd like to explore on a guided tour, we offer a series of free guided hikes that oh, are open to anyone. Really? Yep. It's a program we call Land Trust Treks, and it takes place throughout the county, both in English and Spanish. And you can sign up for a trek on our website oh, and get out to a new place. Perfect. Oh, that sounds really great. So I bet you might have a story or two to share with us. <laughs> That's a good bet. Well, I'd like to talk about why I came to do this work in Santa Barbara County. I'd love to hear it. Okay. So uh, my great-great-grandparents both came to Santa Barbara in 1868. Holy my great-great-grandmother was from Petaluma and mm -hmm. my great-great-grandfather from uh, Maryland. And they both ended up here and they were in agriculture. They were in ranching. Mm -hmm. And they fell in love, of course, and had a family and over time became a really active agricultural family here in the southern part of Santa Barbara County. And so I got to grow up with stories from my grandmother and my mom and my aunt, my great aunt, hearing about the walnut ranch and the lima beans and the lemons and all oh of these incredible gosh. things. But when I came to visit as a child, they weren't there anymore. All I would see when we would drive uh, by the freeway, my mom would point and she'd say, that's where the walnuts were. And what I would see is a parking lot. Oh, gosh. And so I grew up with this sense that something special had been and that there are opportunities to protect those places. It's not to say that development is bad, not at all. But I really believe that California and Santa Barbara in particular is just a world class, class spectacularly beautiful place. And I want to be a part of helping protect the, those important places. Gosh, that is a beautiful story. And such a history you have with the, the organization, the whole concept for why the land trust even exists, and, and Santa Barbara County. Yep, that's right. Gosh. So, okay, we have a few minutes left. 
Uh, what else would you like our audience to know about the Land Trust for Santa Barbara County? I would encourage folks to learn more about us and to get involved in our work. I, I think that everyone has a connection to the outdoors. Everyone has a really personal relationship, either with a favorite place um, or a hike that they take, just mm -hmm. even a view that they look at. And those places mean something. And so we want to represent what everybody cares about in terms of these open spaces in our county. Yeah, that is great. And so, I mean, for me, I'd like to encourage everybody to get on that website, inform themselves about all of the different areas, and then be intentional about going out and exploring each one <coughs> and appreciating, me. appreciating what you folks have done and just you know, the knowledge that because of the work that you have done and continue to do, there's not going to be development on those lands. I think the important thing is that conservation really requires collaboration. Mm. It's an intentional process. It's not an easy process, but there are willing landowners and there's a sort of community level of belief that these places deserve protection. And so we come together to make thoughtful choices. You know, not everywhere in our county will be protected, but right now we do have the opportunity to create more recreation, to protect more agriculture, and to protect more habitat for resilience and for future generations. Future generations, I like that part too. <laughs> so yeah. do I, yeah. So let's say that somebody's watching this and they have some land that they'd like to talk about protecting or they know somebody or they they see some land that they're wondering if that's a possibility what would they do go on your website maybe get a phone number sure we have an info at email that's on our website mm -hmm. we also make a big point of answering the phone when people call <laughs> uh, and we're happy to tell people more about what their options are or how to think about conservation as a choice if they're somebody who's thinking about selling or donating land so do you think that most counties have a land trust or is this <clears throat> relatively unusual? There are a number of land trusts throughout California and in fact we all work together to make our practices stronger. So we have an organization called the California Council of Land Trusts of which we are a member and we work to establish best practices, to identify sources of funding and to uh, connect these places because frankly a mountain lion doesn't care if they're in San Luis Obispo County or Santa Barbara County. They only care if there's a, a corridor that they can travel along that's safe. Mm. And so we work closely with our partners in San Luis Obispo County and Ventura County here specifically. Uh, but we're connected with conservation groups throughout the state and in fact throughout the country. We're also an accredited land trust through a national accreditation program through the Land Trust Alliance. So it's actually a very common way that communities preserve the land that they care about. It's just not quite as visible as I think it should be. Yeah, it's not that visible. I'll bet you a lot of people will be surprised when they hear about the, if they happen to tune in and hear about all this. I hope they learn more and I hope they think about how to be a part of it because um, California is not an easy place to make decisions about land. <laughs> Especially not on the coast. <laughs> That's right. And people have strong feelings about where they live and uh, those are real. And so it, all, it takes everybody kind of voicing their perspective in, a, in order for us to know that we're making the best decisions. Great. So you would encourage people to really uh, be in touch with you and, and, and let you know what their thoughts are. Yes, and it's our job to be in touch too. And so as an organization, we're making a point to be better connected to the communities throughout the county. So uh, what about educational mm, programs in the schools, I'm thinking, or to the population, the commu uh, community in general? Sure. So our Arroyo Hondo Preserve on the Gaviota Coast welcomes a whole host of school groups every year. And in addition to being open to any school who wants to come and visit, we also raise money to cover the cost of busing to get the schools oh. there. We don't want busing to be a barrier for any school to getting to a Royal Hondo. And we're also making a point of offering our educational programs in English and in Spanish so that it's available to everybody. That's great. So um, a Royal Hondo. So tell me, how, if I were, were going to get there from here in Santa Barbara proper, how do I 
go up 101? Yeah, you go right up 101. It's about a 25 minute drive mm. um, outside of Santa Barbara itself. The directions are on our website oh. and you can sign up to reserve a spot for a hike or a visit for free on our website, but we, we monitor the number of visitors per day so that we don't overuse the preserve. Oh, that's it's a, smart. It's a wildlife preserve, so we want to make sure that uh, we're respectful of that. And so just make a reservation. If you have any trouble, give us a call. But we really invite you to come out and enjoy. That, so, so do you have kind of restrictions? Oh, you can only have so many people? Or is it just sort of a, um, I don't know, a value judgment from you guys? Well, COVID changed, of course, how many people, True. and it's, so we've sort of come out of that and we offer slots for 30 cars or 30 reservations um, okay. on the weekends that were open or on the weekdays that were open, 30 each time. What's nice about that is you can feel confident that when you make a reservation, you'll have a lot of solitude and space to just oh. spread your wings, you know? That is wonderful. Oh gosh, Merida, thank you so much for all of this incredible work you're doing. And thanks for being on our show to share it with our audience. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <music>